how you can evaluate your electric bike or your e-scooter. Hey friends, it's Yogi Steve. I figured the best way I can be of value to the YouTube community is to share this list I made of the 10 different ways you can evaluate or judge your electric scooter. You know, I've had uh, four different scooters so far. I have a very expensive Irby, the souped up uh, nine bot Segway, I have the ES4. I also had a Swag Cycle and a Swag Cycle Pro. So I've had four different vehicles and I've made this list of 10 different ways to look at the electric vehicles and decide whether or not you should buy it. Because uh, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have bought the electric vehicles I did in the order that I bought them or even bought some of them at all. So the 10 ways to evaluate your, your electric scooter, your electric bike. The first thing has definitely got to be how far can it go? What is the battery like? The real cheap scooters, $500 and less, can often only go less than 10 miles, which seems pretty good, but it's really only five miles one direction, five miles in the other. And on these batteries, when the battery gets to 50% or lower, or as it gets lower, the performance starts to diminish. So cheaper bikes have cheaper batteries. They don't go as far. They don't have as much acceleration or torque as they lose the battery. So the battery, the life, that's the first thing I look at when I'm buying a scooter. The, the second thing is the bike's ability to accelerate. Some bikes have almost no ability to accelerate. Some bikes can accelerate tremendously. They have great torque and acceleration. That's real important if you're gonna be riding the bike on the street. I ride my bikes mostly on the street, almost never on the sidewalk, almost never off-road. I use my bikes for real commuting. So you need good acceleration. These bikes only go 20 miles an hour at best, so you wanna be able to move in and out with good acceleration. So you know, the third thing I would say that's important is uphill ability. It's a word I made up, uphill ability. If you live where it's flat, this does not matter. You can buy cheaper bikes with smaller motors and smaller batteries. But if you live in Hollywood, if you live in Los Angeles, everything around here is up and down a hill. There are some hills here that cheaper bikes cannot even get up. There are some hills here where the rental scooters cannot even get up because the motors are too small and they don't have a supplemental battery life. So can your bike go up a hill? The fourth thing is comfort or rideability. This is somewhat subjective, but there's two different types of bikes. There's bikes that have air-filled tires that are more comfortable and they have bikes that are that have solid tires that are less comfortable. You know, the advantage of the solid tires is they pretty much, they can never go flat, they last forever. The advantage of the air-filled tires is they're just way more comfortable. You really notice the difference when you ride. So comfort and rideability, how are the shocks? Does the bike have shocks or not? Or not? That'll affect its comfort or rideability. Some cheap bikes just have no shocks, you're just taking it up the butt the whole time. The next thing, fifth thing is portability. Can you bring this thing into a store? Can you fold it up and bring it into a restaurant? They all have different types of portability. And my umbrella thought on portability is, is that something of a, of, of a thing that the salesman used to push the item? Because most of these bikes are small enough, many of them are small enough, where you don't have to fold them up. You can bring it into most restaurants, most supermarkets. You know, maybe you can't bring it into a fancy place, but most of these bikes are small enough where they don't need to fold up and be portable. They're portable on their own. And in some of these bikes, like the Irby as an example, you pay a fortune for real serious portability. The sixth thing is cost, which might very well be the first thing if money is an issue for you or the last thing if money is not. The bikes range from $400 to $2,300. Bikes that I have bought and that I would think an adult could use. So, you know, cost is what it is. It, you know, you get what you pay for and I'll explain to you as I get further into this series what bikes are worth four and 500 bucks that work and what bikes that are 2,500 bucks that suck. Uh, the next thing, the seventh thing is just in general the brakes. How does the bike brake? This is super important because if you have great acceleration, great speed, you need great brakes to stop on a dime. Some of these bikes have good brakes, some of them have terrible brakes, some of them have disc brakes with calipers, some of them have electric brakes, each one has its advantages and disadvantages of its own, but if you're testing out a scooter and riding it, bring it up to speed and stop it. See how easy it is to bring down from you know 20 miles an hour to zero. The next thing on the list, I'm losing track, is this number eight? Serviceability. Look, your bike is gonna fucking break. There's no doubt about it, your bike is gonna break. The tire is gonna puncture, you're gonna have a problem with the electronics, you're gonna have a problem with the shocks, you're gonna have a problem with your throttle, you're gonna have a problem with everything. So how easy is it to fix? So if you buy a more niche-oriented scooter that's a smaller manufacturer, it's usually harder to get parts to fix it. If you get more of a well-known brand, a larger brand, you can get most of the parts on Amazon and fix it yourself. You know, if you're rich, you can rely on outside sources to fix your bike, but I'm not rich, so I like to fix my bike myself. 
So I made sure I learned how to fix tires, brakes, and a couple other things that I'll just normally go wrong on a bike. The last thing, the tenth thing, is, I don't know. I think that's it. Appealability, acceleration, shocks, air tires. All right, maybe that's not ten things, but I'll, I'll look at it and I'll edit the video. All right, so good luck with your scooters. I'm Yogi Steve. I'm one of the early adopters, the lifestyle of driving my scooters everywhere. I do 20 miles a day. This morning I did 30. I'm looking forward to telling you about the 9-bot Segway that I just got, ES4. Kicks ass. All right, guys, have a great, great day.